uh, we all have a sage that we rely on now and then. My sage at Rotary is Gordon. Gordon told me to keep it short. No one wants to hear from you. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll strap my comparative marks and wing it a little bit. Good honor, Gordon. Um, in today's educational environment, uh, things are changing rapidly. Even in the last few years, things have changed dramatically. Uh, there's more of a focus on uh, college and career readiness than there used to be. You can all think of a couple of school districts and a couple of high schools that have a college for everyone kind of mentality. I know I can think of one that has that idea. Um, and that is slowly changing, and it should change, because the world is a much different place now. There are many opportunities for students now that didn't exist before. And our guest today uh, has many years of experience in education, uh, 36 years of experience in education, quite a long time. And he has a vision to share with students in his school district. It's evolved over those 36 years of time. And you will see him walking around usually with a smile on his face. The main reason the smile is on his face is because what he's been able to accomplish at his school district. Uh, the other reason is that this is the first presentation he's giving about this initiative as a newly retired superintendent. <laughs> so he has several reasons to smile. Dr. Russ Greenholt has been an educator for 36 years, uh, some of which uh, at Bermuda Springs, some of which at, at York Suburban, and the remainder as assistant superintendent, superintendent at Conewago Valley School District in Adams County. Um, what he's done in Adams County is something that is of great interest to all of us, <laughs> if we have appliances in our home or need some kind of technical service or, or some service from an engineering firm. What he's done out there is he's created something that's a great opportunity for students and a great opportunity for the community at large. And he did it in collaboration with the community. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Dr. Russ. initiative that we uh, undertook uh, just a few years ago. And the initiative came about uh, based on talking with our local community members, our local businesses, and what we felt was best for our students. So we wanted to create opportunities for our students, we wanted to work with our local businesses, and thus we created a concept uh, called the Colonial Career and Technology Center. We started the concept in 2017. There's a couple different things that, that came into play. It was almost like the perfect storm, if you will, um, the reason we were able to do this. And I do want to mention that uh, our school board was so supportive in this endeavor. I can't thank them enough. And I was pleasantly surprised to see our, our former school board president, Keith Mummer, who's one of our guests today, uh, be here today. But uh, his support and the rest of the board's support, but without that, this would never happen. So I just want to publicly thank uh, Keith again uh, for everything that he's done uh, for not only the district but the community uh, at large. So I just want to give you a couple facts and just some background information because I think it's very important for you to understand where we are as a district. We're in Adams County. We're the largest school district in Adams County. We have about 1,200 students in the high school. We have a 47% free reduce. So folks know what that is. It's the state's poverty level. And our 2019 graduates, when you look at it, we have 73% of our students moving on to further their education. But we did break it down because it's important to show people what a four-year college, a two-year trade, and the 20% entering the workforce is a larger number. We're typically around 70 to 80, 80 plus percent of students going on to college. That workforce number is slowly growing. So when we look at it, it's my responsibility to make sure that we have opportunities for our students, all of our students. Our students who are college bound, we made some changes in the last couple of years and we feel very, very good about those students and the education that we're providing them. We made some changes to our AP programs, college and high school, and programs such as that. So we feel very, very good about those students. And our two-year trade school uh, students, they're very, very successful as well. Even the military. We take great pride in the fact that every year we have multiple students entering academies with West Point, the Naval Academy, Air Force Academy. We're very, very proud of that and proud of service. In fact, uh, one of our 
graduates uh, will be inducted or have her, her jersey retired at the U.S. Naval Academy where she was an All-American. So we're very, very proud of that. But the 20%, those kids who were entering into the workforce, was a group of kids that were basically just, I don't want to say ignoring, but they were just kind of doing their own thing. They were going to shop classes, and we just kind of let them be. But we thought we had to change that. And we had to start addressing those kids. And we had to start addressing the fact that these kids have futures in front of them, and we have to help them. So what we did was is we started looking at some research about what we can do to help them. This is no secret to anyone sitting in this room, these slides. It's the present reality of our country, and in Pennsylvania, and in South Central PA. The current workforce is depleting. Skilled laborers are in demand. So with this information, and what's interesting is, you look down that, that, that third bullet. Now this area isn't impacted by this as much, but nationally, look at that. 33% of the jobs require a four-year degree and 57 skill training. And the next one, only a third of students who go to college are graduating in four years. That's a national number. Now, around here, we do a pretty good job. We're very proud of the fact that our students are going and are graduating on time. And nationally, only 56% will graduate in six years. So we so said, what are we doing with those kids? What happens to those students when they drop out? I'll tell you what happens. They have debt and they have no marketable skills. So that's another group of students that we had to, we had to focus on. So employers are having difficulty finding uh, employees. And in Adams County, what was interesting is, by number employed, the top area is manufacturing. So we're saturated with manufacturing in, 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 uh, in Adams County and in South Central uh, PA. The next one I found to be very, very interesting. 72% of presidents and CEOs feel like the best way to improve their workforce is to work with colleges and, and schools. So we wanted to be part of the problem. So we decided at that point in time we were going to become part of the solution. So what did we do? Well, in 2015, when I became superintendent, the first thing I did was started a foundation for education. We needed that vehicle to drive our local businesses to help us. Also, at the time, we wanted to start a bond initiative. We had some issues with the district that needed to be taken care of. We had HVAC. If you know anything about the max, uh, it was literally full of holes. It just wasn't working. So we had to upgrade some HVAC in two of our buildings. We had some roof issues that needed to be taken care of, other infrastructure items that needed to be addressed. And at the time, I took a hard look at our tech ed classes. Now, the president and CEO from Graphcom in Gettysburg came in to tour our graphics lab. I said, I said, what do you think? He said, don't take this the wrong way, but he said, what you're training your kids on, I've got trash in, in my garage that's better than this stuff. So we weren't doing any favors for our kids. And you say, well, how did that happen? Well, that's a whole other topic. Now, Keith, I'm sure we can get into with funding in Pennsylvania, but uh, it's very, very different, and it's very unfair. So, so we started a bond initiative, and at the same time, your county tech prep is thriving. It's a very, very strong program. Adams County is a little bit different. We have a standalone building that sits beside Gettysburg High School. It's called Adams County Tech Prep. We only have five, five courses of study. That's it. Culinary Arts, Allied Health diesel mechanic, law enforcement, and computer networking. That's it. So we send our students to five programs. So we, as superintendents, went to the board who owns the building and said, hey, would you be interested in expanding this facility for manufacturing? Unfortunately, at the time, they said no, they could not. I right away said, well, I'd like to be a satellite campus for well. Can we do that? And they said yes. I went back to our board, 
and said, look, I'd like to be a satellite campus. Can we upgrade our welding facility? They said, yes. So a couple weeks later, I went back to the board and said, you're going to think I'm crazy, but how about a 25,000 square foot manufacturing training facility right here? That was pretty much what I heard. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Thinking, okay, uh, what we talked about. One of the first things we did was is I went to a trusted business person in our community and said, look, here's my idea. Tell me if this will work. Tell me if you can support this. He said, you build it, we'll help support it. So then I went to another trusted business person in the community and said, tell me how to do this. I want to speak to our local presidents and CEOs of businesses in our districts. You tell me how to do it. Should I go to their place? Should they come to my place? How should we do this? He said, you go to their place. And was he right? Was he right? I found two things out very, very quickly in going through our local manufacturers and businesses, and we hit 40 of them. We were very aggressive. <clears throat> we cold called and said, hey, I'm so-and-so, I'd like to come visit with you. The pride that people have in what they do in this area is unbelievable. The first thing they want to do when I, take, when I go on a tour, they want to take me into their business and say, here, let me show you what we're doing. And the second thing was is their willingness to help. That was evident. So with that, I approached the board. They said, we will build this for you. We'll absorb it into the bond. You take care of the equipment. OK? Um, so at the same time, we're members of the Hanover Chamber of Commerce. The Hanover Chamber of Commerce has the only program in the state of Pennsylvania where they're working pre-apprenticeships and apprenticeships. So we're part of that model. We met with local legislators. We met with PDE, labor and industry. And more importantly, we partnered with local businesses. So that was very, very important to what we did. So we constructed a 25,000 square foot career technology center. The facility includes, and I'll show you uh, some pictures of the facility, because I, I cannot do it justice by talking about it. And I won't do it justice by showing you pictures of it. But if any of you want to come and look at it in person, I'd be more than happy to do that. Although I'm retired, Mr. Mummer and the rest of the board at the time gave me the authority to continue to do tours for the district and to continue to meet with local businesses to carry it on. So, let me show you some of the toys that we have. So this is on the west end of our high school. Um, you can see the pictures, 25,000 square foot. When we built this thing, we focused on three areas. Number one, manufacturing materials to show people what you can do with materials. Number two, manufacturing systems, or systems that go into facilities like this. And thirdly, and most importantly, the training that goes along with this. This is just a drone shot of, um, of the facility. Just another view. You're looking at that and saying, uh, that looks a little strange. Well, it is. It's very unique. That outside wall has 19 different concrete panels displaying what you can do with concrete. Each one of them is tagged. For example, this one is a polymer 9 and 12, and it's a Valley Forge fuel stack. So each one's tagged. We want people to see what you can do with materials. So it's just an example. And I, and I will say, and I got their permission to do so, that this wall is over 240 feet long, 32 feet high, has a total of 22 panels. The whole thing was built and donated by a local manufacturer. We also focused on systems inside the facility. If you see the HVAC system is yellow gold. We wanted it to stand out for students to show them just how complex and how immense a system like that is in one of these facilities. We also have copper, all the copper in its compressed air, and so on and so forth. And more importantly, for the training that we're going to be able to offer for our students. This is part of our mechatronics lab. Uh, we have about 4,000 square feet for mechatronics, it was electrical, mechanical. It's a big ask from our local communities and what they're doing to train our, 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 our students. We have people coming in, and they can't, I can't get them away from this stuff. It's manufactured by Amitrol. Amitrol is one of the leading manufacturers of manufacturing training equipment in the world. They currently have um, 
equipment that we have in here in a brand new uh, plant in Toyota in Nashville. They just put um, they just put some of this equipment in Saudi Arabia. This stuff's all over the place. So our kids have the opportunity to train on this. You also see in the background two robots. One is a small FANUC robot, and the other was donated by RHI Magnesita here in York. A fully functional uh, ABB 4400 robot uh, for our kids to, to train on. And I will say, this program is something that we're encouraging our college-bound students to take advantage of. For a student who wants to be involved in, in uh, engineering and such, to come in and learn a trade makes it more marketable. So it's a very, very attractive for college-bound students as well. This is our construction trades area. Construction trades, we're typically we're a furniture building product shop. And right now we're going to get into HVAC, plumbing, uh, electric. The goal for this program is to build many homes <coughs> and to sell them. This is some of our uh, metal uh, fabrication equipment. These are cost of pieces of equipment. If you're familiar with these, the one on the left is a five mil uh, mill, the one on the right is a three mil. And uh, you can make just about anything you want on these. I can make a small block for a car. I can make a fully functional guitar. And our kids are figuring out how to run this. Another big ask from our community, teach your kids how to run CNC pieces of equipment. Computer number control equipment. So our kids are going to be able to do that. We also purchase simulators. So the little square boxes that you see are simulators. They simulate the CNC computers for those equipment. So our students can work on those. They can design. They can download the thumb drive. They can plug it into the machines. And they're going to be able to go to town. So we have two mills and two lakes. The other ask from our local community was, this is great, but teach your kids how to do it manually too. Because you have a problem with a piece of CNC, usually the guys who run the manual systems will come over and teach them. So we did. So we purchased five track mills, and we also have four Acer uh, lathes that we have in the facility as well for our students to take advantage of. We also have a huge brake machine, and also have a shear. In the background, you can see our welding lab. Our welding lab features 20 welding boots. Each has its own uh, TIG and MIG welder. Another ask from the community was make sure they're miller, because the miller is, is pretty prominent in our area when you talk about what our folks use. And just another shot of our welding boots that we have in here. In our welding area, we also have a CNC plasma cutter. And I'm going to tell you right now, our kids are starting to figure it out, just what's going on with this. I have a young lady who's a senior who can run this thing like nobody's business. She already did something for me. It's incredible. So the other week, we had a company from Tawny Town go through a tour. And I was explaining, uh, Annalise is her name, I said, Annalise can, can do this. And they said, we want to hire her now. <laughs> I said, well, she's a senior. I said, no, 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 we want to hire her now. you got a young lady who can run that? I said, and she does it well. She's teaching other students how to do it. So she's interviewing this month. She'll work part-time. And next year, she'll have a full-time job. And they're going to pay for her education. That's what our kids are starting to realize. <laughs> What's coming out of this? I have another young lady. She has a welding mask on. She flips it up. I said, do you have any idea what you're about to embark on? She said, I have no idea what you're talking about. I said, do you want to be a welder? She said, yeah, I think it's pretty cool. I said, well, if you're good, if you're really good, I can get you 60 bucks an hour. That's 122 grand a year for a welder. No debt, right out of school. She goes, you're kidding. I said, I'm not kidding you. Of course, the guys behind her were like, well, what? that's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> I get you 40. <laughs> but you got to be good, you got to have a good work ethic, and you got to be able to move through. So the welding program was a big ask. So the problem that we have right now is we had 163 of our own high school students sign up for welding this year. We're maxed out. I don't have room for the satellite. All the Adams County kids. So what we did was, is I talked to a local manufacturer, and I said, here's my problem. He said, what do you want to do? I said, I want to build a mezzanine, and I want to cut that in half and put 20 booths on top. He said, you've got it. He said, I'll build it for you. 
for nothing. I just got another $500,000 grant matched to a million for the equipment. That's what our folks are willing to do for our program and for our kids. This is a spiral staircase. It's another feature of, of what you can do with uh, manufacturing materials. That actually goes on top to a mezzanine. We have three mezzanines in the facility. And you can actually go on top of the mezzanine. And what's really pretty cool is when you go outside that, it's a rooftop classroom where kids can uh, study HVAC rooftop units. Uh, wasn't my idea. It came from ABC, the Association of Builders and Contractors and Likes. I saw it and said, I got to happen. Got to happen. So we have it. The other thing that we wanted to make sure we had in our facility is what we call an innovation space. You heard our, our, our folks from your college talk about innovation spaces. And by the way, your college is awesome to work with. They're awesome. They're great partners to work with. I've been in conversation with uh, some of their folks to talk about what's changing in education. So they're a great partner. We value their partnership, and they're, they're incredible to work with. This facility here is what we call the innovation space. It is a space where I wanted kids to be able to go to solve problems. Or, better yet, go into businesses and find the problems and come with solutions. We've got boardroom concepts where they can go within the facility. We also have what we call like a storefront. So that's a glass that looks out into the main facility. I want our students with their noses pressed up against the window figuring out what's going on out there because we're promoting it. What we did was, if you look on those tables, they're computers. They are 4D augmented reality computers from ZSpace. The curriculum in those computers is K-12. to I can have any student K-12 to come in there, whether it's a, a high school student, biology, studying chromosomes and DNA, and actually you can take the DNA model right out in front of you, and you can manipulate it, you can turn It's incredible. I can tear a 350 small block engine apart. I can build a bridge. I can figure out traffic studies. I can figure out road problems and sinkholes. I can do whatever. I had a teacher go into these Z-Space computers and recreate D-Day for a different outcome. It's incredible. And you know what's great? A local, a local club donated all the money for that. They said, this is awesome. Well, I have to tell you that the glass, I wanted this to be state of the art, so I wanted to smoke or electrify the glass. So you hit a switch, it smokes it, and you can't see in or out for privacy. It was 150 grand. So I said to the donor, it's just too much money. There's no way I'm going to ask you to do that. So you pick something else out. So we picked out those. He came in and did the demo. He said, I'll give you 50 grand for as many of those you can buy. It's awesome. So we're selling our product. This is just another shot that we have for our students. And also, when kids come up with solutions to problems, this leads into a presentation lab for our students to be able to present their findings. I think it's very important for our students to be able to articulate what they, what they research and be able to communicate that to an audience. Very important. Very important. So we have a presentation zone that we have in here as well. The facility also features 90 28-inch Apple iMac machines. This is our graphics lab, which has 30 of them. Kids love it. So they design it, and they go to our graphics lab, and they create it. In our graphics lab, everyone loves this piece of equipment. It's a fathead machine. You know what a fathead is? The vinyl adhesive, like the NFL, the NBA. So I can create five foot wide vinyl adhesives for anybody. So what are we doing? What I'd like to do is create vinyl adhesives for nonprofits in the area. We need to teach our kids how to give back. I have some administrators who'd like to have their image on this and post up in the cafeteria. <laughs> Always being watched. <laughs> oh. It's a shot of our photo lab. It has 30 of uh, the apples in as well. We also have a uh, photo studio for kids. And we're offering them opportunities like they've never had before. Um, like I said, we purchased a couple of drones. But right now, we just completed a, a commercial for a local a coffee shop in New Oxford, and they're running that, and now we have our kids who are going out, and they're actually creating a commercial for the district right now, once we got the center done. And we already have local businesses to say, how can we get your kids into our business? So why don't you let us bring our drones, indoor drone down, and we can video what you allow us to video, we can bring your place back to us. So our kids are creating those types of opportunities. This is our CAD lab, uh, computer-aided drafting, for our students in engineering. 
We also have three uh, full-size 3D printers for our students, where students are creating, uh, for example, we have a social studies classroom we created uh, water solutions in uh, countries that have issues with it. They're recreating it in 3D. It's an incredible project. This is another big ask from our local community, so we need forklift drivers. All right, so we bought a forklift simulator. 15-hour course, kids can sit down on this, go 15 hours, they can come out, we'll put them on our forklift that we bought for the facility. We've already trained three students, one female, two males, all three of them have jobs in working forklifts in different companies right now. It was an ask from our local folks. So that'll do, that'll do forklift and backup. The thing I think I'm proudest of is, is it, don't take this as my quote. I'm going to tell you that the Department of Labor and Industry, they've been down several times. And they said, look, you are the only public high school in Pennsylvania doing this this magnitude. So how cool is it? We have Pennsylvania, state flag, and our school colors are maroon and gray with the Navy accents. All the steel in the facility is Navy. So we've got that gold, it's got the Navy and gold, we've got our Pennsylvania State College right there for our kids. Just to remind them all the time we're Pennsylvania proud in regards to what we're doing. That's the easy part, to build it. Our students will be afforded the opportunity in welding to get their AWS certification, American Welding Society. College and high school welding credits for our kids. NIMS certification for metal fabrication. Electronic certification. Career and technology ready. This is going to be no surprise, but you're going to say, hey, it's great teaching the skill, but how about some soft skills? How about you teach them to come to work on time? <coughs> how about you teach them to stay off of this for a little bit? How about you teach them what a good work ethic is? What we have. If you're familiar with Mike Rowe and his Dirty Jobs Pledge, what we did is we created career ready endorsements. So our, our uh, career counselor has created a career ready endorsement, it's a checklist what our students will be able to have when they walk out. So if I walk out and I'm a prospective employee for you, I can walk up to you and say, here's what I can do for you. I am proficient in safety. I am proficient in work ethic. I'm a leader. I'm proficient in this and this. So it'll kind of like a resume as a checklist in regards to those soft skills that are so, so important for our students. Well, Mechatronics, we're actually working with local um, uh, college hack for mechatronic certification, mm -hmm. forklift certification, pre-apprenticeship and apprenticeship opportunities, co-op opportunities, and adult ed opportunities. These are the opportunities that we're providing for our kids. And they're just starting to figure it out. So what we've done is, I had a real aha moment. And this is some of the accountability pieces that we have. I'm running short on time. Some of the accountability pieces, it's very important to show our investors what we're able to do and give back. Pressure's on us now. <coughs> Second bullet, 700 of our high school students will take at least one course this year. It's 57% of our population. Without really knowing what's going on, they're starting to figure it out. I see that number growing. So I had a student last year come up to me. We were just chit-chatting about a program we were in at, at, at Adams County. He's a diesel mechanic. We were just talking. I said, what are you going to do with, with your, your certification? He said, one in the military. I said, awesome. Good for you. That's incredible. He said, hey. He said, do you know anyone that might be hiring a diesel mechanic? Well, about fell down. So you got to be kidding me. He goes, what? I said, I'm going to phone right now and get you a job as a diesel mechanic right here in our area. He said, wow, I didn't know that. That's our problem. Why doesn't he know that? Why doesn't he or she know that? With you? So we have to spend some time educating our parents and our students about what opportunities are out there for them and do a better job. So one of the things that we're doing is, is the main hallway that we have by the center, we have two 50-inch flat screen TVs, and we're scrolling mobile jobs. Just for kids to see, wow, look at all those opportunities that are going to be afforded of me uh, in the future. These are just other metrics that, that we have uh, for our folks. Let's so make sure that we're taking care of that. So how do we sustain it? We have our foundation. We've been approved for three programs from EITC. We got our first check for $25,000 from a local company for the, the uh, tax credit program, which was awesome. PD programs. We have an advisory committee. 
where local presidents and CEOs of companies are going to sit on an advisory panel. We have a first one January 29th, and local partnerships. And folks, all of the These are some of the main sponsors that we have. All the equipment that you saw in that facility, computers, furniture, mills, everything you saw was donated money. We raised close to $3 million from our local folks to make this happen. What does that mean? A, senator, a state senator said to me, he said, you have just proven what you can do when schools and communities get together. I spent a lot of years coaching. And we all had students who would say, and I was coaching them, every now and then you get a kid who comes out and you ask him to come out and play. And after the season, so how come you never came out before? He said, frankly, no one asked. Because some kids just don't have that guidance at home. Local business owner. Frankly, no one's ever asked. That's what I'm asking. I'm not asking for your money. I'm asking for your partnership. Whether that's an employee coming in to work with our kids, whether it's giving us some scrap from a welding area, doesn't matter. The partnership is what's going to sustain this in the future. And we're constantly looking for partners as we move down the road to keep this thing going. Folks, I've, I've overstayed my time. I apologize for that. But I could talk to you for hours about this. There's a source of pride that we have. Tim and I have talked about it a couple times. And what's interesting now is, is where do we go from here? I had a local dealership come to me and say, we'd like to build an auto technician center right where that is. OK. How about somewhere? No, we want to build it here. The Brethren Home, which is a, a retirement community in, in our district, wants us to look at a health care training facility kids because they're hurt so it's really going down a couple different paths and we couldn't be prouder and I can't say enough about our board uh, and, and how they've supported me in this endeavor and uh, I'm very very proud of it we're going to track all kinds of students to it and uh, thank you again for your time today we really do appreciate it